Hey, this is Wes, and in this Unity Cookie Quick Tip, we're going to take a look at how to create a laser sight. I've been coming off this uh, kind of crazy head cold, so I apologize up front. My voice is going to sound pretty bad, so uh, I'm sorry uh, you got to sit through kind of this, uh, kind of basically stomach this raspy voice, but um, we'll go ahead and just kind of walk through this guy and what I did. Now, this scene here is a uh, basically a personal project I had been working on, and I uh, kind of created this prototype here so that I could uh, just test this laser sight. So I'm going to hit play play and then we'll come over here into the uh, game view and if I hold down left and just uh, move my mouse back and forth I could kind of rotate this kind of turret here and so you can see that here we have this laser beam kind of just you know imagine that it's a rifle or some type of uh, weapon and it's just kind of you know extending off into space and so what I'll be able to do is when I actually come and target I wanted this laser beam to kind of interact with that so like if there's a wall here I didn't want this to I wanted the beam to terminate obviously because the the light beam is hitting hitting something or it's colliding with something and so um, here's I just kind of want to show you how I came up with that technique and you can even see here that we have this uh, cube and it's kind of rotated and you can see that the beam kind of just follows right along the faces uh, of that cube mesh and as we kind of just continue to rotate through you can see the beam you know interacting as as it should and then here in the 3d view you can see it happening as well here so um, We'll bring this back. Uh, something else I'll show you too is if we basically have, you know, the beam is targeted onto something, and I have it set up to where if I hit the space bar, you can see that here in our console that it's actually uh, registering that we have a hit, uh, and then it's telling me what enemy name here. So over in my hierarchy, you can see that I have each one of these cubes are basically just named something like enemy two, three, four, five, and one. And so as I start to kind of rotate this and I hit space bar, you can see that now it's telling me I hit enemy two. So I'm just going to show you how I did this and um, so what we have here is we've got each one of these little cubes and uh, these are nothing more than just default unity cubes and uh, just will point out that they do have a box collider attached to them and that's needed so when we actually do the um, when we actually test for collision we'll need to have that box collider item attached and then I also want to note that each one of these cubes also has a tag of enemy so it's just a tag that I created and, and placed it here enemy so that I can actually define you know what what I'm actually going to be working with and then here is my player so the way I was actually going to set up player in this game and let's kind of zoom out you can see that basically I've got again this little unity kind of box here a little cube to kind of stand in for my mesh and uh, what I have is a game object and then underneath that game object, I have my camera. So if we go ahead and hit play on this, and then I uh, again, you can see that, that all that's doing is you see the camera's moving. Um, what's actually being animated or moving in the scene is actually the player itself. And then the camera is just parented along, and it follows along for the ride. And then I have another game object underneath that, which I'm calling the turret. And the turret is basically was just an empty game object that I attached a, let's see here. Uh, well, it's just actually this this uh, this box collider here that's that's attached to this cube, and um, actually I think the way I did this, let's just move this up and yeah, it's basically, I'm sorry, let me go take this back. The first is just an empty game object, uh, and then underneath of that is where I actually have the Unity cube. So obviously you can see that we have the cube mesh filter, and then we have the box collider, and the mesh renderer is attached to that. And then underneath that, we have another empty game object. And this, this is the, the game object that actually has the line renderer component attached. So if I kind of just drop this down, you can see that basically I have this uh, laser material that I created. And I'll show you what that is. And then here is uh, basically the shader is just particles additive. And all it is is just a simple material using particles additive. And then here you can see that I just have an image here that I'm using as the particle texture. And then I'm tinting that with the color red. And so uh, that's what this empty game object here is. And if you see what we could do with this is as we start to move this, if I just go ahead and move this here in my y-axis, you can see that basically that's, that is, is, is standing in or this game object becomes my origin point. So when I actually did have um, a specific like, like the barrel of a weapon, instead of just parenting it to the entire character itself, I would actually just parent this to the tip of the, of the barrel. And so I'll just undo that.
Okay, so now that you kind of just see how the player is put together, and then uh, also I have these little game objects out here in my scene, you can see that. Let's go ahead and actually look at the, the scripts that are, that are controlling everything. And, uh, you know, what, real quick, I just want to add to the point that, you know, how important it is to when you have an idea or something that you want to do with a game, it's very important just to uh, don't don't jump in and try to just do the whole thing at one time and think, OK, well, I'm going to get all these high resolution. Don't don't worry about that. Just just start with something really simple like this, just a prototype scene and just test your ideas. That way you can actually get your ideas, uh, you know, see them actually in practice. And then, you know, really, that's that's your grounds for testing is, hey, was that actually a good idea or not? So. Anyways, just, just wanted to stress the point that it's always really important to prototype your ideas. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. Um, our enemy, no script attached to that other than just the tag of enemy. We have the player, and so the player has two scripts. One is the controls, and one is the weapon. And what I really want to focus on is basically the weapon. We're not really going to talk about the control script. The control script uh, is really, and I'll just look at it just, just briefly here, all this is doing is just giving me that, you know, I needed to be able to move this object in the scene, you know, just, just something to test with. And so all it's doing is just utilizing, it's testing, you know, in the update, you know, is the left must mouse button down, and if it is, we're going to get the axis here, and then it's just taking speed, you know, here I'm taking that speed times friction with the axis, uh, and then basically just using a, a quaternion Euler and just feeding that in, and then finally getting that value and just feeding that to the rotation of the transform. So in that case, this controls, so it's talking about the transform, it's talking about the player. So the object that's actually being controlled is this this game object player. So the actual mesh or the character itself doesn't have any controls on it in, in, you know, in this case. The next thing is the weapon. So let's take a look at the weapon. And this actually is really, really simple. And so you can see that I have this public game object called barrel. And um, in this case, and in this case, I, I wanted to just have this to where, you know, it's just a public game object that I could set. So if we go back over here to um, that player script, you can see that, you know, I just took this. It's actually looking at that laser sight. So remember, the laser sights is what we actually have the line render attached to. And ideally, how would I do this, uh, you know, once once I'm out of this prototype stage is I would probably uh, just tag my, uh, my my the barrel of my weapon w with something specific. And then I would just do a, a lookup up here in my start and just cache that that transform based off you know I'd find it based off the tag so game object find a game object with tag command and then I would just cache that so I wouldn't worry about having to you know do this drag and drop here I would just you know base it off the tag and then when I brought my model in if I wanted to change that model I could have various different models or different weapons and all I'd have to do is instead of constantly dragging back and forth this this basically this kind of hard-coded connection between the object and the script itself I would just drive it off the tag and so, you know, here in the update, all we're doing is we're just checking for the get key down, the key, key code space, the space bar. And then once that happens, we just hit this fire function here. And so the fire function is really simple. It's just casting a ray out into the scene. So um, here we're using C sharp. So this is kind of the syntax for that. So we start with a ray, uh, ray cast hit variable. Uh, then here we go into physics, ray cast. And then we're basically taking the gun barrel, uh, which here, remember, it's our public game object that we're working with. So gun barrels transforms position. So we're starting the ray cast at the position of the tip of the gun barrel. And then we're basically using the uh, helper method here from the transform. So transform.forward. So basically that's this shooting that ray from the tip of the gun barrel all the way out just forward into the scene. And then basically I just run a check here and saying if hit collider's tag is set to enemy. Now again, that's why the importance of taking each one of these enemies and just setting them with a tag. So again, later on, once I actually started to, uh, you know, f you know, flesh out the game a bit more, I could have, I could swap different enemies and all I'd have to do is just make sure that those all have the same tag and the scripts would work. And then uh, basically if we, if we hit collide uh, to the tag of something called enemy, then I'm just printing out uh, hit collider.gameobject.name. So here, obviously, I would do a lot more. I might pass that to another class that keeps track of, you know, destroying the character or, the, or whatever I want to do but uh, in this case we're just kind of prototyping and just I was just kind of fleshing out some ideas okay so if we go back to our scene uh, underneath our player you can see that we got our controls and our weapons and that's how that works if we go underneath here to our laser sights, uh, we actually have a laser script, and uh, this is uh, this one here, here is probably where the um, kind of the meat of this tutorial 
is going to be placed. So let's just go ahead and run this guy. And again, it's surprisingly pretty simple. Um, the idea of this is, you know, I had, I was like, okay, well, you know, it's easy enough to have the line render just shooting out into the scene and drawing this. But what was happening is, you know, obviously uh, this line, if you don't tell it to or if you don't adjust it, it's just going to just render, you know, it's going to shoot right through all these objects. And you don't want that because, you know, obviously the, the, you know, the light beam would not do that. So what I did was I just set up a, a, a private um, variable here uh, of my line renderer that I'm calling LR. And then I just cached that in my startup. So I just did a, a get component lookup of line renderer. And this code right here, this works because the script attached right here. So you can see we have the script attached, you know, a part of that game object, there actually is a line render component. So, um, you know, if you were doing this in, you know, in a script that you would want to be able to, I guess, just be, um, you know, something that you could do, you know, add it to very different objects or, or whatever, and you want it to just be as flexible as possible, you'd probably want to make sure, do some type of check here to make sure that if this component exists, if it doesn't, you, you need to add it and that kind of stuff. But again, in this case, I just, just very simply just already knew what I was, you know, I know there's a line render on there, so let's just do get component line render. And then in the update function, we do the same thing. We just do a raycast again. So, you know, here, uh, C-sharp kind of way of doing this. We, we start with, a, with our hit here. And then we do a physics raycast. Now, in this case, I'm actually raycasting from the transform.position. Uh, so in this case, we know that it is the, here I have this game object selected, so you can see right here on the transform, that's exactly where that raycast is going to start from. So again, it's going to end up being the tip of the barrel of the gun. And then we do transform.forward. Uh, we talked about that previously, but if you can see, if we kind of just move this forward, you can see that we've got our axes here. So we've got our Y up and our Z is forward. And so that's actually the transform.forward. So that ray is going to shoot right along the Z axis. And you can actually see that indication here if we kind of look at the the transform widget's uh, Z axis arrow pointing here, or handle, excuse me. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is uh, we'll just go through and we just, you know, if hit collider, uh, we do one thing. And then if else we're not hitting it, we do something else. So we're basically just checking to see if we hit something. Now, if we do hit something, so in this case, we're not looking for something specific. We're just looking to see if we hit any type of collider in the scene. And if so, what we do is we take the line renderer set position function. And now the, uh, we have a couple parameters here. So you notice this says one. So in the line renderer set position, you basically have two points that you're going to control. Zero meaning the first point and one means the second point. So in the case of the line renderer, uh, if we look at point zero, that's basically the origin of where the line is going to start. And then point one is, you know, all the way off here into space or, you know, the end of the line. And so the first thing I did is if we hit the collider and I want to, I, what I do is I take the second uh, point and I create a new vector for that. So, uh, and I'm only worried about the Z because in the way this game is going to work uh, or this concept I'm working with, we're only really worried about projecting uh, or shooting rays across the Z, or down the Z here. And so what we do is uh, we just go in and we, like I said, we set this new vector three. We got zero for X, zero for Y. We don't want to set any values there. And then all we do here is we do hit dot distance. So this basically is going to return to us the distance. So from, you know, the from when the ray was cast and it's gonna the distance it took until it actually hit that ray and so we get that value and that basically is a really easy way for us to just to, to use that to set how long we want this line render so basically we're setting the position of the second point here in our set position function and we do that again by hit distance again another convenience method here that we're working with uh, based off this ray cast hit now, if we don't hit anything, so that's what we have our else for, uh, that means, you know, there's nothing in the way. Uh, LR set position, so line render set position. Again, we're talking about the one, meaning that second point. We set up a new vector three as well. This time we've got zero, zero. And this time in the Z, I just put 5,000. So basically, I'm just trying to say, you know, just shoot that thing, you know, way out into, way out into my scene here. So I just use 5,000 to start. Uh, if I knew my scene was a certain distance, I would, you know, possibly put it at that number. But I knew that, that at that case, 5,000 was going to be far enough. And so once we get that in place, what that does is it allows us to basically terminate this line render. So again, if I start to move, you can see that here, that second position, We'll kind of zoom in. Uh, we shot the ray out in the scene. It hit the, uh, we did a ray cast, so we shot this ray out in the scene. It hit the collider here of this enemy. So what it did was it, that's my hit distance. So my hit distance is basically from this point to this point. We fed that back to uh, right here into our hit dot collider. So that was true. 
uh, we grab that hit distance again is the line basically and then we just said hey take that value and uh, establish that as a position so that's where we're getting this new vector 3 so this set position takes an index of what point you want to work with and then it takes a vector 3 as in what position in 3d space do you want to place that and so again like I said hit di distance gave us that value really easily so what we have is basically the effect I was going for where I had this laser sight and as I kind of move where I kind of like have my characters kind of you know twisting you know kind of pointing his gun doing some aiming here in, into my scene uh, you can see this this uh, laser sight is just kind of reacting Acting to all of the different types of colliders. Now, in this case, it could be enemies, or it could be, you know, walls or rocks or or, or anything else. So, as you can see, um, again, just stressing the the importance of you know prototyping your ideas and kind of just working through things. And uh, just wanted to share this tip with you on how you can create a laser sight, and I hope you find it useful for your own personal game projects.